We got another crazy chapter with more insane reveals about Dragon, Luffy, Kuma, the most broken devil fruit there is, and more. So make sure to stay tuned for this one. But first, chill the parking with it and smash that like button if you enjoy seeing these weekly chapter reviews and want to keep them coming. Make this the video you joined the Nakama if you haven't already by subscribing and hitting that notification bell to turn on all notifications so you don't miss future One Piece videos and updates. Bear in mind, by hitting that one virtual button, you're actually helping me achieve my insane goal of 2 million subscribers here on YouTube and I'd be eternally grateful for that and now without further ado let's jump into it spoilers and all so this chapter chapter 1101 is called dear Bonnie so we will have more flashback but don't worry it's worth it as we'll see one of the craziest chapters now the color spread for this chapter will be a dream come true for Vegapunk fans we get Vegapunk in the middle Lilith and Pythagoras to his right Atlas and Edison to his left York's face in the background on the right side and Shaka's face in the background on the left side and then Vega Force 1 in the center. This is a great one for Vegapunk stands. But onto the chapter itself and it starts with a little flashback inside of the flashback, Flashception if you will. Kuma remembers one of his trips with the Revolutionary Army in Goa Kingdom. Kuma mentions that he noticed that Dragon seemed to know a lot about the country. He even says, crazy part here, that he visited a village outside the country to observe a certain boy. Of course, we know that certain boy was none other than his son, Monkey D. Luffy. And this is huge, by the way. We know he used to look off into the distance in the direction of his son, but this takes it to another level. Dragon not only thought of his son, he'd even make the time to observe him in secret. Now why if he loved him so much clearly, did he abandon him and never meet him face to face? Well believe it or not, Oda will finally give us that information in this one. Dragon says to Kuma, keep talking if you wanna die. Pretty cool hearing Dragon talk like that. And Kuma asks why, to which Dragon replies, a child is the parent's weakness, end quote. Kuma says he understands and he won't look into that anymore. So Oda not only shows how much Dragon cares for his son Luffy in this chapter, Dragon actually says it's because he cares about his son so much that he keeps him at a distance. In other words, Dragon knows that Luffy would be in danger and a target if people knew Luffy was his son and that Dragon loved him, so he keeps him at a distance. All of this Dragon time in the flashback makes me excited that Dragon will be joining forces with Luffy sooner rather than later, as I've been saying. Think about it, now he can't really use the excuse anymore for not seeing Luffy because Luffy is pretty much on the most wanted list already so Dragon getting closer to him shouldn't make him any more of a target. Thus Dragon and Luffy will meet up and join forces soon hopefully. Oda seems to be teasing him more and more with each passing chapter and I for one am hyped. Smash that like button if you are too. Then for now, we cut to the normal flashback where the last chapter ended. Kuma entered Mount Kolubo and observed Luffy. By the way, Luffy's 16 years old at this point. He's practicing a secret attack and this is a very nice touch and throwback to an iconic moment that I'll get into shortly. The move he's practicing is his Gomu Gomu no Ono aka Gum Gum Battle Axe. Yes, the same attack that he used to defeat Arlong, one of the most iconic moments in One Piece. Since that was also one of the big moments of the recent ultra popular One Piece live action season, Oda's timing seems pretty purposeful here. It's very cool to know that Luffy spent so much time long ago practicing this move and now we appreciate that moment with Arlong all the more. This is what I love about Oda's flashbacks. They make us not only appreciate the flashback, but also other moments in the story. We appreciate them more and in new ways. Suddenly, Kuma gets a call from the world government. Luffy hears the sound, and this is the interesting part, senses a chilling presence nearby. But when he looks, Kuma is gone. Luffy says, um, there must be some really strong animal in this forest that I have yet to defeat, end quote. We won't get into the fact that he wouldn't stand a chance at defeating this animal yet, but it does sound like some pretty solid observation hockey for a 16 year old I gotta say. It's also funny because Kuma is looked at as a bear and that's why his clone is called S-Bear so it fits pretty perfectly. So Kuma left Don Island we're told to complete world government orders. We can see Kuma helping a merchant ship that was attacked by pirates and Kuma being the powerhouse he is makes the pirates surrender. I gotta say Kuma's devil fruit powers that let him pretty much teleport anywhere make him the perfect tool for fixing problems like this. Think about it. Wherever there's an issue Kuma 
Akuma can just appear in moments and solve it. It reminds me how overpowered this fruit is, especially when used by someone so strong. And that makes sense since this was a prize alongside Kaido's mythical zone fruit, and we know how special that one is. But that's not even the most broken fruit of the chapter, as we'll get into near the end of this video. For now, we're told that during the entire chapter, we have narration from Kuma's letters to Bonnie. The letters talk about how Kuma loves Bonnie, and he also talks about the many beautiful and amazing islands where they will travel together in the future. Obviously, he knows they won't get the chance because he'll lose his mind and free will, but he talks about them as if they will get to visit them together in order to cheer up Bonnie. However, we then cut to Sorbet Kingdom and we see that Kuma's letters are being intercepted and even destroyed by Alpha, which just seems unnecessarily cruel. I know that maybe there could be secret codes of breakout plans and stuff from their perspective, but Bonnie is less than 10 years old. It just seems so innocent that it infuriates me all the more, not that we needed more reason to be infuriated by the world government. Thus, we got a situation where Kid Bonnie is waiting for Kuma's letters every day because he said he'd write them, but from her perspective, they never arrive. It's heartbreaking stuff, making it seem like her father has forgotten about her. But don't worry, I know we're all mad, I know we're all fuming right now, but don't worry, Alpha will get her just desserts before the chapter is over, I promise. We then get a reveal that I love. It turns out that Bonnie never actually revealed her Toshi Toshi no Mi, aka Age Age Fruit powers to Alpha and the medical team. Connie instructed her to keep her powers a secret. And then she drops one of my favorite quotes to date. She says, and I quote, a smart hawk must always hide its claws, end quote awesome quote and it plays into the story beautifully right now. It's almost as good as that quote, an awesome human must always smash that like button. Jokes aside though, Kuma visits Vegapunk's laboratory and we see him meeting Stussy's clone, who I'll just refer to as Stussy moving forward. Stussy says, I wonder who is more unfortunate, a human with no consciousness or a clone with consciousness, end quote. But Vegapunk brings her back to reality real quick, not entertaining her teenager-like brooding. He says, enough Stussy, I told you that you are a human. Vegapunk, by the way, already has his apple head here. He explains that once the modification is completed, Kuma won't have any memories or emotion left, so clearly Kuma is the one that's worse off. However, Vegapunk says that he will keep Kuma's consciousness up until the very last minute and one year remains until the surgery is completed. And as we saw, good guy Vegapunk seemed to do even better than that and stored Kuma's memories in the form of one of his giant paw bubbles. We do see Kuma helping the Revolutionary Army from time to time, talk about a conflict of interest for a government worker, but now he is completely silent and never talks to them. Dragon and his other friends know there must be a reason behind Kuma's strange behavior. But now to the truly crazy stuff. Back to Sorbet Kingdom and Bonnie is celebrating her 9th birthday. Kuma's letters still haven't arrived. Then we're told one year passed since Bonnie's surgery ended and so Bonnie is now 100% healed. However, Alpha won't let Bonnie go until her 10th birthday. Now at first glance, this is sort of what Bonnie expected, that she'd be cured by 10, but then Connie gets some shocking info from a local town bar. One member of the medical team lets it slip that Alpha and the other medical team members are world government agents. That's when Connie and the people of Sorbet Kingdom realize something's wrong, and accordingly, they begin to plan for Bonnie's escape. So the strongest fisherman from Sorbet Kingdom will take Bonnie to the sea and help her find Kuma. They remodeled a fisherman's ship into a pirate ship and decorated it to look like pizza for Bonnie. Suddenly her ship design makes so much more sense now that we know she's only around 10-ish. Connie and Bonnie switch clothes and Bonnie steps outside for the first time. Bonnie gets past the guards and reaches the ship. However, Alpha realizes she is Bonnie and chases her using Geppo. Alpha says, in case you try to escape, I'm allowed to beat you up and restrain you. And this is where we get to the shocking stuff. Bonnie in child form recalls one day when she asked Kuma what Nika looks like. Kuma says he's not really sure, all he knows is that his body has a rubber quality and he can fight any way he wants. Then she uses her attack Distortion Future and thinks of a future where she can be like Nika. So keep in mind, this is all way before Luffy awakened his powers. In the epic panel, we see Bonnie punching Alpha with a giant punch like Luffy's Gear 3. Take that Alpha, I told you she'd get her just desserts. Then Bonnie escapes Sorbet Kingdom and wow, I'm not even surprised she became a supernova as a kid anymore. She she literally beat a special agent and has arguably the most broken fruit of all. Think about it, using Distorted Future, she can potentially adopt any devil fruit power. 
It's crazy when you think about it. The narrator tells us that the world government immediately becomes aware of the hostage Bonnie's escape. Then we're told we see her fisherman ship turn into a pirate ship of the new era, rivaling Luffy and the other pirates from that generation. And if you love other characters with broken powers like Bonnie, then you won't want to miss my recent Oda finally revealed Shanks' true identity and powers video link on screen right now. Like and subscribe to help us reach that insane milestone of 2 million subscribers here on YouTube, and I'll see you in the next one.